Hello and welcome to another edition of CARICOM File. The Caribbean Community CARICOM is about fostering regional integration and improving the lives of Caribbean people everywhere. Recently, 19 students from Antigua and Barbuda were in Barbados as part of a special CSME exchange program, a practical way of putting the CSME in action. The program is a collaborative exercise organized through the CSME Public Education Program, Barbados's National Focal Point, and the CARICOM Secretariat. It's a project created by the CARICOM Secretariat with support from the European Union. And it was decided that as part of our awareness program, our public education on the CSME, we should have something targeted at tertiary students. And the idea is you have 12 member states participating in the CSME, along with Haiti. But at this time, we're dealing with the 12 participating with the English-speaking Caribbean, and plus Suriname. And if you talk about the CSME as having five freedoms, movement of capital, right of establishment, etc., etc., you will follow that path. So you'll have the students having a session with immigration, coalition of services, the central bank, seeing how capital is moving, and finding out for themselves in the field just how the CSME is operating and looking at opportunities as well, cross-border opportunities. Mr. Place, on its role as CARICOM lead for the CSME, the CARICOM Secretariat is once again executing the project Students Engaging the CSME Through Field Promotion. This is a project designed by the staff of the Secretariat and demonstrates our commitment to assist member states in ensuring that our young people are more involved in participating in and benefiting from regional integration. The European Union is committed to working actively with CARICOM member states to ensure programs come to fruition. Funding for this project was facilitated under the 10th European Development Fund. The Caribbean um, was perhaps uh, given special favours in many ways because you are a closely knit uh, group of countries here Many of the countries spoke the same language. Of course, the Dominican Republic and Haiti um, became part of it as well. They do not speak English, but most of the others do. So for us to create a regional cooperation in the Caribbean was perhaps easier than in many other places. The time has come for the full application of the free movement regime in CARICOM especially as it relates to the use of CARICOM skill certificates in the 10 areas that have been agreed, the movement of service providers in a planned and organized manner, and the exercise of rights of establishment by our entrepreneurs. The escalation of this free movement is critical to the integration process. It moves us away from functional cooperation into real integration. Because once we get into that free movement process, we are going to be changing the laws of countries, using an almost supranational authority to make sure that everybody comes in line. So this is not just functional cooperation, this is real integration. And once we are able to establish this regime, we are on this successful path to final Caribbean integration. The students were able to visit a number of organizations and interact with key stakeholders. Persons who present to participate in the program, they must present a birth certificate, proof of citizenship, their qualifications, proof of registration with a professional agency, a copy of their current passport, the biodata page, a marriage certificate where it is applicable, two passport size photographs, and police certificates of character from their home country or any other country they have lived in over six months after the age of 16 years. So having possessed the CARICOM skill certificate, proactively, you're able to Enter the member state, get your stay for at least six months, have your papers regularized, and move on to the immigration 
to get that permission to work and live in that country. You come to the immigration department, you present your skill certificate. You're granted, you should be granted six months. No, I'm sure there must be some reason why my friend over here was granted not allowed to work. I don't know if you didn't produce something. I don't know what went wrong. But normally, but in a case like that, you can come down to the immigration department and we would give you a stamp saying that you are allowed to work. But that shouldn't be a big issue. It is important for anyone desirous of moving from one member state to another to know there are specific steps that must be followed. So if you, a nurse, move from Antigua and you come to Barbados to provide nursing services, you are operating under the freedom of movement. If you come on a temporary basis or you provide those services over the internet, you are providing your services on a cross-border basis. Persons involved in business are also free to move under the regime. If you are a business person, you are an engineer, St. Vincent just built a new Argyle International Airport, right? They didn't have an international airport before, but they also didn't have a lot of engineers. A lot of the engineers that worked on that project, along with the China State Corporation, came from Barbados. You'd get on a Liat plane on a morning, get on a plane, and you'd see these guys moving down there in their heavy boots and stuff. They're going to St. Vincent for the day because they're the engineers consulting on the project or they're providing short-term services on, the, con on the, the airport project, Argyle International. That is the movement of services. So sometimes when you hear people in the news talking about CSME are working, CARICOM isn't working, it is a farce, it is because sometimes there is a lack of understanding of how the mechanisms actually work. Doesn't mean that there are no regulations doesn't mean it's a free-for-all. It means that the regulations are made transparent, predictable, as many restrictions as possible are removed under the General Agreement on Trade and Services. Article 4 requires that in a regional integration arrangement that substantially all restrictions are removed. We have removed substantially all, but there are some which remain, particularly in the area of domestic regulation, and you have to meet them. The CSME is alive and is being implemented in each member state to promote economic enfranchisement. It's a very involving process. Um, you know, uh, back in the day, in 1989, our heads came together and then they took a decision that we're going to transform our integration movement into what we now know as a CARICOM single market and economy. So the treaty was revised, um, the original 1973 treaty. It was revised into what we now know as a revised treaty of Chagoramas, and it was signed by our heads of government in 2001. Now, signature is one, but we needed to ensure that we enact the treaty into domestic legislation as well. So a very comprehensive program started back in the day in 2001, 2002, where all the participating member states had identified restrictions that existed in their particular sectors. And at the end of the day, in 2005, 2006, member states had removed those restrictions, which was basically the instrument that we would have used in terms of assessing member states' compliance with the single market. So in 2006, around 144 restrictions were removed, thus making way for the single market to be established in the 12 participating member states. Right now, the focus is on educating the wider public about their rights under the Treaty of Chagaramas and making sure policies are implemented. So our focus for the last, say, maybe eight years had been to ensure that following the legislative framework that has been put in place, that we also streamline processes and at the same time harmonize and standardize these processes. Because if it is a single market, we really want to do one process which is replicated in each member state instead of 12 different processes or in some specific cases 13 different processes. So we have been doing an exercise where we are implementing proposed best practices. So a consultant has developed proposed best practices for us which are to be implemented in all of the parts participating member states. And once that is done, we really have in place arrangements for the single market which are easily accessible but which are also harmonized across the board. And what did the students learn from this experience?
The one week in Barbados is absolutely amazing. It's important to see not only where small islands, but the benefit of actually coming together. It's different to travel to another country and see more similarities than different, so it benefited me in that way. What stood out to me most was the visit to Wibisco factory. Um, it's important to me to see Caribbean islands actually doing and competing on an international level. It makes the whole vision of CSME to me seem practical and actually something that can actually happen. The point of CSME is in regional integration. So we need to learn how to have free movement of people without discrimination or restrictions. How we need to have free movement of capital without ta any restrictions as well. And we need to learn how our government can bring us together. And not only our government, but our people as well. Because we all think that we're separate, but really and truly we're one Caribbean country, one Caribbean. What I plan to do is take everything that I've learned, all the knowledge, all the experience, because we've been to a few business places, I plan to just use all the knowledge that I've gained and learn about the differences that I've acquired here in Barbados compared to Antigua and put everything together so that, you know, once every, every country works together, everything comes together and we can build a better future for our young people. Well, the island is very lovely. Um, I must say I enjoyed myself and also I learned um, certain practices that we can use in our country as well um, pertaining to the restrictions that they have in the Port Authority. Um, certain practices that they use there, I can see that we can adapt that in our country so it will prevent certain um, we will prevent certain issues and like example fraud and so on and so forth from happening in our port authority back home. During their stay, the students were able to see the best of Barbados, including Harrison's Cave. In 1970. Well, the tours of Harrison Cave was very interesting and um, because I've never been inside a cave and it seemed very interesting to learn how Barbados was made and how the cave became now a tourist attraction, how the first settlers had, how the people who first explored the cave had to go through it. Oh, it was nice. Um, the only thing I wanted to touch you know, because I'm that type of girl that likes to touch. I'm an adventurous person. And the scenes are very lovely, I must say. And how will the students put what they have learnt into practice? The good thing about the internet is that it allows you very cheaply to engage persons like this after the project is finished. And that's what we have been using. It's also a visibility activity. So as young persons are wont to do, they're gonna be blogging, um, tweeting, they're gonna be on Facebook, and we actually follow them over the years. And they themselves have their own input in the conversation of the challenges of CARICOM. And we know university and tertiary students are not gonna let their views be silent. So they're very dynamic, even more so than us technicians. Just a snapshot of the CSME through field promotion exercise where students from Antigua and Barbuda were in Barbados as part of a CSME exchange project. It's a way of seeing the CSME in action. In future, a similar cohort of Barbadian students will travel to Jamaica as part of the program. And that's where we end this edition of CARICOM File. Thanks for joining us and goodbye. Thank you.